Thankfully, enough of that adhesive held so that my camera didn't go flying down the highway at 70 miles an hour. Welcome back to Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs, where today we're going to be riding this 2018 Goldwing from Carrollton, Texas out to Midland, Texas. Today's trip starts about 5.30 in the morning, and I've laid out a route using Highway 180 West on my Zumo XT, and we're going to start out, but first we've got to get to Weatherford, Texas, and for that we have to take some of the crowded freeways here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Even at 5.45 in the morning, traffic is pretty heavy. About 40 minutes into the ride, I take my first exit at Willow Park, Texas, where I like to stop at the McDonald's, have some morning coffee, and let the sun come up. Now that I've had my morning coffee, I'm back on I-20 West, and I take my next exit to 180 West here in Weatherford, Texas. We kind of consider Weatherford to be the westernmost city in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Now when watching the video, Weatherford is the first place I begin to notice there's a problem with my motovlog. Okay, we are coming to Parker County Courthouse here in uh, Weatherford. You may notice the horizon is pretty high on my helmet cam. In fact, you can barely see the courthouse in the top of the frame. And that's because the GoPro is about to fall off of my helmet. At this point, I had no idea what was going on with my GoPro. I was unaware of it until many, many miles down the road. But we'll talk about it later in this video. What's really cool about Highway 180 East or West is it kind of wraps around the Parker County Courthouse and you just can't miss it and it's a pretty impressive sight. Weatherford is located about 30 miles west of Fort Worth and it's a pretty substantial community. There's a lot going on here and it's a nice place to live. I think it would be probably all of the benefits of living in the Metroplex without some of the hustle and bustle even though this is where we'll see the heaviest traffic on Highway 180 West. So we're now on the highway to Mineral Wells. We're just a few miles east of Mineral Wells and you can already see the landscape starting to change. And I gotta tell you, I, I much prefer riding on these U.S. highways or even the state highways as opposed to the interstates. You can see the pace is much slower. The 20 mile ride from Weatherford to Mineral Wells was probably the prettiest part of the journey. Unfortunately, as you can see, my GoPro camera is aiming down and you can't really see the scenery, but there were some pretty nice hills and trees along this route. Very unfortunate that I didn't capture it. And you know, this town has a very kind of interesting history. The, uh, you know, back in the day, it's kind of got its name and it's famous for these uh, mineral wells with a well water. The most famous well in town is one called the um, Crazy Well. I'm going to stop here and grab a picture with this sign if I can. 
Now at this point, I am completely unaware that the GoPro camera is aiming down. I think I'm looking straight ahead at this mineral well sign. So I completely missed this shot because of the mounting on my GoPro camera, which we're going to talk about. So anyway, the most famous well in town was the one called the Crazy Well. And the reason it got its name is, as the legend goes, there was this kind of crazy, derelict, uh, elderly woman living here. And she was drinking from this well every day. And it cured her, supposedly. It's, uh, it uh, healed her lunacy or whatever she was suffering from. And it became very famous. And people started coming here from all over the world to either soak in the mineral baths or I guess they drank the water. I'm not sure the whole story. And I think during the 20s, it was a kind of a popular tourist destination. People came here from all over the world. And uh, probably one of the most famous landmarks is the Baker Hotel, which we should go by here in a little bit. It has now been determined that the water of these uh, mineral wells contains a lot of lithium. And as you may know, lithium is one of the things they give to uh, people with bipolar disorder and some other uh, mental disorders. So who knows? Maybe there's some, uh, maybe it actually did cure the lady of her uh, lunacy. Some of you probably think I should grab a couple of gallons and sit on the side of the road and drink it myself. about 36 miles outside of Breckenridge and you can already tell the wind is starting to pick up here on Highway 180. I had to pull over. There's a little bitty town, I don't even know the name of it, I pulled off in back there because my GoPro on my helmet was starting to move down. And I thought maybe I hadn't tightened the screw. But when I took my helmet off and I was going to tighten it up, I realized what had happened is the adhesive on this chin mount has started to fail. Now I've been using this chin mount for months, no problems. But uh, today I noticed it's just the, the camera's starting to pull away and I'm glad I checked it because if that foam uh, tape lets loose guess what my GoPro goes off on the road somewhere so I'm gonna reach out to chin mounts and see if they might have a solution for this Right now, as it is today, I don't know that I can recommend this chin mount solution because that adhesive is is uh, beginning to come loose, and I'm just kind of uh, pressing it back into place, and it appears to be holding right now. Uh, I'm going to check it again when I stop for gas, just to make sure. This is the last recording I'm going to be able to make with my helmet camera. I am at the Swinson Memorial Museum here in Breckenridge, which looks like it used to be the first national bank. I'm not going in the museum, but it's kind of an interesting uh, building. Just around the corner from the museum, there's a great place for a photo op in front of a huge mural. And this is where I also stopped to remove the chin mount from my helmet. Now, 
Now, honestly, there's just not a lot to see and do in Albany, Texas, but they do have a pretty impressive Shackelford County Courthouse that was built in 1884, so I thought I'd stop and get a closer look. Across the street from the courthouse is this cool old building with a Studebaker sign. I wonder if this actually was a Studebaker dealership. If you know, put it in the comments down below. If you have the time when in Albany, check out Fort Griffin State Park. The fort was one in a line of western defensive forts from 1867 to 1881. It looks like something I might want to check out the next time I'm in Albany. But today it's time to head on down the road to Anson, Texas, and the scenery is now starting to look a little more like West Texas, just kind of flat and dry. Welcome to Anson, population 2430. Anson is part of the Abilene metropolitan area, and if you thought there was very little to see in Albany, there's even less to see in Anson. As we leave Anson, we have 32 miles to our next small town of Roby. Now, this is just a little farm community with less than 700 population. In 1996, 43 people here each put in $10 to buy lottery tickets, and they won the $46 million jackpot Overnight, 6% of the population became millionaires. The parking lot at this volunteer fire department in Roby makes a great place to stop and have a drink of water before I head on down the road. You can see the winds picking up as I get ready to leave Roby. The next 32 miles to Snyder is pretty much straight, flat highway. Temperatures are starting to pick up and the scenery is getting even more bland. Mesquite trees and just kind of a desolate look to the area. That's West Texas. As you approach Snyder from the east, you'll drive past a really huge wind farm with over a hundred windmills. And what was interesting is even today with 40 mile an hour winds, every one of these windmills was dead still. But make no mistake, Snyder is an oil town. The pump jacks, workover units, and drilling rigs are still going strong even though the windmills are stopped. Snyder has a population of just over 11,000 people and there's about 44,000 people in the overall area and as I said earlier this is an oil town and as such not a lot to see or do it's actually kind of an ugly place to be honest with you and it is the end of our highway 180 west journey but not the end of the road trip from here, we'll head south to Big Spring, Texas, where we'll pick up Interstate 20 and then on to Midland, our final destination. On the ride to Big Spring, the temperatures really start to pick up, as does the wind. This is a pretty boring, straight, flat ride. By this time, I'm just ready to get the ride over with.
Even though we bypass Big Spring, Texas on this trip, we're kind of north of town getting on the interstate. Big Spring is about 25,000 population. The biggest landmark here really is the Settles Hotel, which is about 15 stories high and has kind of an interesting past. I remember growing up around here in the 70s and it had a reputation as a place where the oil field workers could uh, get some evening entertainment from the ladies, if you know what I mean. Now that we're on the boring interstate and the last leg of the trip to Midland, Texas, here's how I rate the Highway 180 West from Weatherford to Snyder. It's not about great roads or great scenery, it's just about the lack of traffic on the interstate. <laughs> As I finish up my ride to Midland, I'd like to remind you if you like this video, don't forget to click that like button. It really helps our YouTube rankings, and I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlog.